Start back again for another update, or I should say another podcast. What we're going to talk about today, as you can see on your screen, is the coronavirus, C-O-V-I-D-19, most commonly referred to by me as the Wuhan virus because that's where it came from. And we're going to look at John Hopkins first. Okay, first similarities between this Wuhan virus is easier for me to say and the flu as you can see both cause a fever cough body aches fatigue vomiting and diarrhea maybe mild or severe even fatal in rare cases and this is both of them fatal in rare cases they can result in pneumonia the transmission both can be spread droplets in the air from infected person coughing sneezing or talking possible possible People, pay attention. It says possible. It might, keyword might, go through the airborne route. Okay? The flu can be spread by an infected person for several days before their symptoms appear. The Wuhan virus is believed to be spread in the same way, but we don't know for sure yet. Okay? So... It's possible it could be different, but it's possible it could be the same. All right? Neither virus is treated by antibiotics. We know this. Both are treated by addressing the symptoms. Prevention. Both can be prevented through washing your hands, coughing into the nook of your elbow if you don't have one of those crazy face masks on to, so you can just cough without touching yourself. Staying at home when you're sick and limiting your contact with people who are infected. No shit, Sherlock. The cause. The Wuhan virus is caused by one virus and it's called a severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 now, according, I assume, the WHO. Flu is caused by several different strains. Transmission. While both may be transmitted in similar ways, there is a possible difference. Keyword possible here, people. Pay attention. Antiviral medications. Okay. The Wuhan virus has medications that are being tested. Antiviral medications can address symptoms and sometimes, keyword again, sometimes shorten the duration of the common flu. There is a vaccine for the flu and we know that it helps for all those people who aren't anti-vaxxers or whatever they call themselves. The Wuhan virus, let's look at it. This is, you have 156,400 cases worldwide, most in China. I'll point that out if nobody else will. 2,952 cases in the United States as of, I believe, yesterday. If my clock is right. What does my calendar say? My calendar says today is the 16th, so yesterday, and I'm in Taiwan. The flu has an estimated 1 billion cases worldwide. Look at that, 1 billion. Okay, do the math. I'm not going to. 9.3 million to 45 million cases in the U.S. per year. Deaths. So far, the Wuhan virus has killed approximately... 5,833 people reported in the world. Okay? Where's my thing here? Back to recording. Sorry about that. I have a cat that wanted to be let into the room and was making noise. So I believe we left off with how many deaths. Look at the deaths from the flu. 291,000 to over half a million, 12,000 to 61,000 in the U.S. per year. How many people have died in the U.S. so far? I believe less than 100. So compare that, the common flu, to this new Wuhan virus. Are you beginning to see a picture here? People are just going crazy about something that they have no idea. It may have, it might, it could, possibly. Let's go see what our people at Vox say. Now, Vox 
they look a little bit less relaxed or less under control than John Hopkins. For example, confirmed Wuhan virus cases. Look at this. Worldwide is way up there. Look how many China has. Look at the rest of the world down here, people. Look at this. As of the 13th, this is what it was. Is it zooming up? Hell no, it's not zooming anywhere. All right? Down here, no symptoms. Da da. They're all the same. Okay, death rate in China have declined over time. I don't live in China. I'm not worried about the death rate in China. I'm worried about the death rate in America. All right? And I don't even live in America, but I'm, you know, I'm connected to America. I'm an American living abroad. Now, older people in China have been at the greatest risk dying from the virus. What about in the rest of the world? Do we know? I don't know, but it's 18%. How much more severe is it? Let's look. According to their data, all right, they have 0.1% of all ages die from seasonal flu. Coronavirus, all agents, or the Wuhan virus, whatever, 2.3%. Okay, yes, maybe more people die, but, you know, look at the numbers. And first, you've got to get it before you die, all right? Does it spread any differently? Experts also think, again, think it might be more contagious, but they're using an RO to estimate. See that word there? Estimate. It means we don't know, all right? And if we don't know, I'm not that worried about it. Common sense will protect me. 2 to 3.11, all right? Common flu, 1.3. Okay, two to point, little, 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 okay, twice, twice, maybe, all right? Again, a big maybe. And this is travel. Who gives a crap about travel in the middle of a virus? And what is a pandemic? What is a pandemic? Let's look, what is a pandemic? Define pandemic. Let's go, what is a pandemic and how does it change the world, okay? The who, what is a pandemic, is not, has nothing to do with the changes to the characteristic of a disease, but is instead associated with concerns over its geographic spread. In other words, it's spreading. When a new disease for which people do not have an, an immunity spreads around the world beyond expectations. So, the WHO declared it a pandemic because they didn't think it was going to spread so far, and it did. It does nothing to do with how many people are dying, all right? And again, we have cases that involve travelers who have in, been infected in a foreign country and returned to their home country. These idiots going to China and then going back. Once a pandemic is declared, it becomes more likely that community spread will eventually happen. What is community spread? Community spread is when some idiot has traveled to an infected country, brought it back, and spread it to people within their community. In other words, there is a connection back to the country where they brought it from. It doesn't just pop up out of the air, okay? So, again, uh, the WHO gets to declare when there is a pandemic, there's no threshold, no certain amount of deaths or infection. You had the SARS in 2003 was not declared a pandemic despite affecting 26 countries. Why not? We don't know. It says its spread was contained quickly. What is quickly? How long was quickly? I haven't gone back and looked over it, but I don't think it lasted a whole lot longer than this has been going on. It has been written about that the declaration, the swine flu as a pandemic 
in 2009 caused unnecessary panic, overwhelming emergency departments, and causing governments to overspend on antiviral medications. No shit, Sherlock. Again, this declaration of causing, calling it a pandemic is ridiculous. Let's see. What do we have? C-O-V-I-D in Washington State. And we'll go to Washington State. Washington State. We have live coverage. Let's see if we got any images that will show what's going on. Let's look at Washington State here. Uh, can we see this? Can you guys see this? I hope you can. Look at this. What do we got? Positive, total positive confirmed, 457. How many people have died? 36. All right. Compared to what? Again, why is this? I saw the governor of Washington last night on YouTube, live coverage, talking about the end of the world is upon us. Basically, we're doing this. Kids are staying home, which, by the way, I think is an excellent idea. Kids should stay home from school. But closing uh, businesses and so forth and, uh, you know, from restaurants to office workers is ridiculous. Kids get together and they're running around hugging, fighting, touching, all this. So, yes, they're more likely to sp spread the flu and this type of virus. But for adults, you don't go around hugging people, shaking hands, coughing in their face, and being, what, what did they say, six feet away from somebody is a little drastic. Three feet is fine, okay? As long as nobody is coughing on you. As far as droplets in the air, I believe, if I recall correctly, and I haven't really been following this because it just pisses me off that people are overreacting so much, but I believe that the droplets in the air came from the idea of a hotel in or an apartment complex in Hong Kong that had crappy ventilation and open sewer pipes or sewer lines under it where the virus spread by the feces and going up in the air and cooking and boiling and stuff like that. If you're not familiar with Asia, lots of Asian places we have ditches, we don't have pipes, and we don't have perfect um, sewage systems here. One reason, of course, is we don't pay as much tax here as we do in America and other Western countries. So, Washington State. Let's see. North Carolina. My family's in North Carolina. Let's see how they are doing. All right? In North Carolina, do we have any things? Uh, so far, it looks like North Carolina might have reported cases of about mm, six, I would say, six to ten, somewhere in that. All right, look at these places. None, 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 none. Why? Why do they have none? Probably because there are few international travelers coming from these places or who have went to China or who have a connection with somebody from China, all right? But then again, we have this map here. These schools are closing. Why are they closing? It's, it's ridiculous, considering, yes, maybe it affects uh, twice as many people as far as spreading it, but the point is they don't know if it spreads any easier. All right. So again, we're looking at, you know, certain things here. What is this? This is, uh, what is this right here? If I'm not mistaken, this is probably, what is this? What is this? Wake County, Wake County, University, uh, it's a university county. How many is in Wake? Mecklenburg County. Wake County has 14 total cases. All right. Uh, my family's kind of like up here somewhere, and I'm not going to zoom in on them, but I've got family in Tennessee. Let's see what's going on in Tennessee, so I don't want them, I don't want Tina to feel left out. Tennessee. What do we got in Tennessee? Uh, coronavirus in Tennessee. Do we have a map? Uh, stands at 29 confirmed cases. 
All right. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in. I guess I can't. But where are they? They're somewhere over here. Like in here, I think. Can I zoom in? I don't know. Let's see if I can zoom in. Let's see. Oh, we got something, but is that going to help me? Davis, Hamilton, da, 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 da. Nope. Not in any of these places. Which is kind of strange because Henderson, I believe, is the county. In Henderson County, I think, they have the Church of Christ, which does a tremendous amount of missionary work. And obviously, they're not, they don't have it. So again, I'm going to end this pretty fast here because it's just ridiculous. It's making me angry because people are just overreacting. Common sense. Uh, we don't need this. And we don't need this. Sorry. Anyway, today is the 16th. This is all common sense. There is no reason to panic. All right, I'm here in Taiwan, which is just a stone's throw, stone's throw from China across the Taiwan Strait, South China, South China Sea, or whatever, and we've had one person die. Now, if you're not familiar with the what's going on here, I'm not going to get into all of that. Let's just say lots of businessmen go to China and work and during the lunar new year which is when this thing really kicked off here in china it they came from china back to taiwan all right and they were working and living in probably infected areas if they didn't bring it back and we don't have a lot of it here why the hell is everybody else so concerned of course as my taiwanese friends will gladly point out Taiwan immediately, as soon as, as soon as it was identified, stopped Chinese people from coming into Taiwan, stopped Taiwanese people from going to China, brought back people that were sick, and so forth. So they took drastic measures. Of course, in Taiwan, they're rationing those infamous face masks, the little pieces of tissue that people slap up on their face, and everybody's wearing one for the most part. You can't even go in a hospital unless you have one on. You can't go to a doctor's office unless you wear one. Hell, I even went to the vet and the vet wouldn't let me come in because I didn't have a face mask on. It's ridiculous, it's, bu it's beyond ridiculous, but it's their culture. In Asia, people love the face mask, all right? They even wear them fashion statements. They've got them with Pokemon, Doraemon, all these other little things on them, right? Uh, British flags, American flags, Canadian flags, all on the face mask. So people love the face mask here in Taiwan. That's, you know, their business, not my business. All right. But the point is, you know, uh, let's see if we can get a world wide update on the virus see it pops right up first thing live updates let's look at images i we're doing this by image here one day ago six day one hour ago let's see what we got here one hour ago this is what we got all right these the size of the little ball here of course look at the big ball right here and what is this iran what is the connection between Iran and China? Well, one connection that I can make, or I think I can make, and I'm not exactly an expert qualified on this, but I will say that China is practicing money politics in this part of the world and in Africa, and they're sending lots of people to these places. People from these places, such as Iran, are going to China to try to get some money trying to drum up some support for their country and therefore there's a lot of interaction between Chinese and these people and that is helping to spread these illnesses. Also, you're not familiar with uh, there was a family in a Hong Kong Hong Kong family hot pot virus. Let's see if this works. I don't know. 
Uh, communal hot pot is in Taiwan, in China. See, everybody over here is doing this little number now. Um, this is falls victim. This is talking about people stop it. But here, what happened is, if you look at this really quickly, of after members of the same family who shared a large dinner in January were confirmed to have the virus. What happened was, nine people using chopsticks, all digging into the same pot of cooked food, all sharing it, somebody was sick, and that one person gave it to all nine or eight other people. And that's when people stopped doing their hot pot stuff like they used to. But look at this. I mean, this is ridiculous. Look at China. The problem is China is not the rest of the world. Yes, it is spread. But relatively speaking, it's not that big of a deal. All right. And again, I'm speaking from the idea that people will do something commonsensical to take care of themselves. You should always be washing your hands, so you should have done that before. You should always have some distance between you and somebody else at this time. In the past, of course, you know, Americans love to hug. Some do. My family does. Shaking hands is a, uh, a normal business practice and stuff. So these things are things that people need to remember and do during times like this or during flu season even. But China, I don't quite understand because having lived here in Asia for a number of years, they're not big huggers. They don't get up on top of each other that much in public. And I don't know if I see two Chinese businessmen meeting I don't think they normally just shake hands, so I don't know how the hell, maybe. I think part of it is the cultural habit here in Asia where we order dishes. We don't order separate meals. We order dishes, and then, depending on who you are, you use your own personal chopsticks or you use chopsticks provided by the store, whatever, and you pick out what you want from each dish, put it on your plate, and eat it. And then you go back again after you've had the chopsticks in your mouth. And that's probably the way it's really spreading so much here in Asia. All right. So I think that is more than people touchy feely kind of stuff here. And I don't think it's really that airborne. I'm not an expert again, but from the little bit that we've talked about just now, it doesn't seem like you know, there's anything to justify declaring a state of an emergency in the United States or a state of emergency in Washington or, you know, closing the schools, I totally agree with, you know. So they can do that to help people. But as far as um, closing businesses, closing restaurants, uh, you know, people working from home, Hell, if you can work at home now, you could be working at home all the time. So, uh, think about that when your boss tells you to come back to work. All right, so I'm done and we're going to end this. And yes, it's a pandemic, but as we saw before, that really doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot except the WHO has decided it's a pandemic. There's absolutely no written qualifications or whatever to determine what is or isn't a pandemic. All right. It's all up to what the who thinks. All right. Have a nice day and we're going to stop.